right, another five ton train with a bad TXB. What do we got there? 61 degrees of superheat, 11 degrees of subcool. It looks restricted to me. If I open it up, it's gonna have some ice on the distribution tubes coming off of the TXB. Um, the blower motor's running. Condenser fan motor's running, compressor's running. So I'm gonna replace the TXV today and the filter dryer. And hopefully that solves this problem. It's on recovery now. I'm taking out the 410A. There should be nine pounds and so and so ounces. While this is recovering, I gotta go and bring some more stuff up on the roof. My convenience outlet up here was not working. In fact, if I go over here and touch it, watch this. If I hit reset, if I test it, the day, <laughs> it just pops out. Yeah, so it's shot. That needs replaced. Send it up to the customer and see what they want to do. But I'm having to use my extension cords all the way to the back of the building to get some power. At least that one was working. So this is going pretty fast. I'm going to let it pull down and get the rest of my stuff up on the roof and I'll get back with you. And we're in a vacuum. I'm going to let it run like 10 more minutes and try and get anything out of it that's not boiled off yet. So there's a bit of ice. Throw that in my drink. See like that right there, there's refrigerant in the bottom of that suction line manifold. So it looks like this compressor has been replaced and the dryer have been replaced. And what's happened is this dryer got too hot. Well it doesn't look like it got too hot. It's, it's not cooked. But maybe brazing practices weren't followed correctly and you know we got some stuff in the system. But this TXV is original, so it's hard telling. Anytime a system is opened up, it's just a matter of time before the metering device just gets damaged if you don't do everything just, just perfect. That's my opinion anyways. Oh, this has an ECM motor. That looks expensive. The filters look nice and clean. Yeah. So I've got the factory dryer to put back in instead of a 3 8 Hopefully I've got enough to work with there. And uh, the TXV is just going to be nice and simple to put in. Oh, it is brazen though. There's nothing mechanical about it. That's no big deal though. I'm going to take a look at all these little tubes and make sure they've got no rub out points. Like right there, that looks like these guys are kind of touching quite a bit. Give them the old rub and tug on each other. This has gotten hot at some point. See that? Yeah, these all look pretty good. Okay, well I'll get all this put away and out out will come the torches and we'll move on to the next step. So the system has been evacuated of all of its refrigerant. I've currently got a nitrogen purge going through. This has the non-removable Schrader valves which is a stupid horrible dumb decision by manufacturers. Carrier does it. Now this train 410A model unit's doing it for some odd reason. It's just not good. They need to stop that. I don't see it on the newer units, so maybe they dropped that trend. So I'm just gonna let it blow through the system and and you know pick up any of that trace refrigerant that might try and come out on me while I'm 
unsweating some of this. Uh, I definitely have to unsweat the uh, TXV because I don't have enough pipe there to, I don't want to repipe and if I cut it I'm not going to have enough pipe to put it all back together. And this filter dryer, I'm going to do the TXV first and then I'll do the filter dryer. Yeah, it should be pretty simple. I need to be careful about these wires and behind the filter dryer though. Look at that. They got all those damn wires back there. Just ready to be cooked. And look at this splice. Oh my god. That's terrible. But we'll make do. Make it right. New TXV. Got it all brazed in. Looks <laughs> it looks okay. Uh, new dryer put in. It looks just factory as can be. I'm doing a pressure test right now. It's it's doing good. It's doing all right. I need to look up on these gauges how how it actually does its tightness test, but I seem to be passing. It hasn't given me any trouble so far. So now I need to uh I got my big hoses, the Appions. I need to take my big hoses, grab my vacuum pump and some 410A and start this uh, vacuum process, get it underway. I did braze up this right here, this discharge line because it's been known to crack around it and down it. So I just put some extra solder on it. I put some extra solder on this bend right here because it's got quite the, quite the 90 in it. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. So I'll get this thing, uh, I'm going to leave it on this tightness test. And go and grab my 410A and my vacuum pump and my hoses and start getting ready for a... Uh... Well, you know what? I can't pull a vacuum with my big hoses because I can't remove these valve cores. So I'm going to have to pull a vacuum through my gauges. That sucks. That's what I got to do. Well, I like my tightness test. It was pretty good. I'm doing a like a just a rough pull down real quick of my uh, hoses, just to make sure that we're all good and we can achieve a pretty good vacuum. Just on my hoses and my rigs tight, tight enough to do what I need to do. So it's got down to 430 so far. 420. That's not amazing. See if we can let some air out of it real quick. See if there's anything hiding in behind these gaskets. Five sixty, five twenty, four ninety. I like to see it hit like the threes. It should, yeah, there we go. Keep going. 400. 390, 380, there we go. So, we should be able to pull a reasonable vacuum with this rig. You know, it's not the best since it doesn't have removable valve cores, but that's what we're gonna have to deal with. And it's, it's pulling down even more. It would get to the 200s if I let it. So I'm going to go ahead and open my gas ballast. And give it, give it the whole system now. Let it pull this sucker down. It's going to take a minute, but there she goes. Oh, she's pulling all kinds of moisture out. So I like this CPS pump but it's fallen behind in terms of technology because most pumps nowadays have a nice half inch port and a three-eighths port 
and a quarter port. And this one only has one three eighths and I really need to have two halves for my Appion hoses. Or two three quarter or three eighths, I mean. So, you know, I might be in the market for a pump soon, a vacuum pump. This gets the job done, but I'd like to be able to uh, just use my uh, hoses without any adapters or anything. It's adapters or leak points. I'm going to let this thing work on this vacuum and I'm going to get all this back together. Get this panel back on and get the uh, 410A on the scale and attach to this yellow service line. Oh, good news down to 260 I'm gonna go ahead and valve off the vacuum pump and see what this leak rate's gonna be hopefully she holds at 260 that would be just perfect I mean it's allowed to go up a little bit but like not too much but, uh, oh, get this out the way. I need to bleed this. There we go. That's bled, and that's holding just fine. I'm going to close. my suction line off and and look at this see how that you never want to use your manifold for vacuum ever because it they're so far apart it's not even funny it's not even funny and I trust the CPS I really do I really really do trust the CPS vacuum gauge so nine pounds 9.4 pounds. That's not 9.4 ounces. That's 9.4 pounds, which would be almost nine and a half pounds, which would be like 9.8 ounces. So I'm gonna go with like 9.6, 9.7 ounces. Nine pounds seven ounces. Look, that hasn't moved an inch. That's beautiful. Uh. So yeah, I'm just ready to zero this out one more time. Feed in the refrigerant into the liquid line. There it goes, a pound already. And the CPS gauge just went straight to max. And this, it's a hot day and it's a hot roof. This should feed in and like, I need to be, I need to be careful. Four pounds already. Holy shish kebabs. It's cold. Liquid line, nice and cold. Ah, is that all we're gonna get in? Five pounds. All right, so I got, I need to put a pound and three ounces. I was sh short a pound and three ounces, but I've, I got that in the van. I'll go get it here in a second. What's upsetting is Ooh, that's a lot of head pressure. Yes, sir, that's a hell of a lot of head pressure. Uh, I will be cleaning this coil before I leave this, this roof. This coil is definitely in bad shape and I gotta put a pound, three ounces more in it. It's gonna be pissed. When I do that, it's gonna be really pissed. It's gonna run probably 500 head whenever I put another pound in it. But, um, 
it is what it is. Just gonna have to call my boss and tell him, man, this coil is probably needing split. You know, probably need split. This coil was supposed to have been cleaned already, but you know, we'll see. It is, well, it, it drops and then it climbs, and then, then it climbs like really high. God dang. God dang. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna start shimmying some of this junk on over to the edge of the roof and go down and get another thing of 410A and get some hoses up here and just clean this bad boy before this compressor tanks out. Just got done cleaning these coils and the head pressure is back down to normal. Heck yes. Uh, coils should be dry already. Yeah, they are. I cleaned the crap out of them. I had to buy a new hose nozzle because I've lost the daggone keeper nut off the back of this. Freaking garbage. Yeah, that coil is really clean now. It's pulling in some air. Discharge temperature out of the condenser fan motor is way better too. It looks like I left that coil cleaner on there a bit long, but it's a pretty old coil to begin with. No, it's not that bad. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, 338, 15 degrees of subcool. I'm happy with that. Well, that's pretty much it for this job. Uh, I got the rest of the refrigerant in. This unit's running great now. I just gotta get all this stuff off the roof and head to the next job. <laughs> Alright, well thanks for watching this video. And uh, checking in. Catch you on the next one.